Hi, we're at Cisco Live at the DevNet floor here today with Ashish Shah from Avi Networks. Ashish, very excited to be with you here today and hearing about Avi specifically. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. And Andres, it's very nice meeting you and uh, excited to be here as well. Absolutely. Please tell us more about Avi Networks. Absolutely. So the Avi Networks has built next generation software defined application services solution. It includes software load balancing, application security, and application monitoring. And it's built for next generation software defined data center environments. Very cool. Sounds like you're spot on. What a specific problem are you attempting to address? Absolutely. So as you know that the data centers are moving to the next generation software defined automated environments. And while Cisco ACI APIC solves their network problems at layer two, layer three, you still have a challenge with the load balancing the layer four to layer seven solutions. So what Avi Networks is trying to do is solve that last mile problem where you provide end-to-end -end automation from layer four to layer seven in terms of self-service delivery, automated experience where users can deploy their own load balancers, they can get application monitoring and analytics, and as they move to the next generation software different environment, they can get the same experience that they get in a public cloud for both on-premises, hybrid, and public cloud environments. Sounds like the ultimate experience the customer is after for. You're abstracting a lot of the implementation details and delivering the service insertion in a very automated manner. How do you leverage APIC and Cisco infrastructure specifically? Sure. So as you can see here, uh, Avi's architecture is very similar to APIC's architecture. We have a central controller in front of APIC, which is managing the distributed ACI fabric. Similarly, on the Avi side, we have a centralized Avi controller, which is managing the lifecycle of the distributed software load balancers, which are deployed on UCS or any other x86 servers. The integration between Avi controller and APIC is to REST APIs. So whether you have 10 load balancers or 10,000, you have a single logical integration through the REST APIs. What Avi controller does is talks to APIC and automatically transfers policies between APIC and Avi. So when you do service insertion in APIC, let's say you have a contract for which you are to uh, add a service graph. Uh, once you do add the service graph, Avi controller automatically imports that information, includes endpoint group, the endpoints information automatically, and programs the load balancers. It programs APIC for the lift sift mapping, for the device selection policies, talks to vCenter for the port group information, and so on. So what the end users get is, in form of his API, is fully automated, one-touch deployment of load balancers. But that's just day zero problem. As you, within APIC, let's say you add additional endpoints within the EPG, or you remove uh, malicious uh, endpoints from your EPG, Avi controller automatically gets that information through REST API, uh, provisions the load balancers appropriately, so that the configuration and the policies are always in sync between APIC and Avi. Full automation. For the listeners of the video, would you like to elaborate on particular use cases or a specific examples now that we've covered the theory from a high level? Absolutely. So we are working jointly with uh, Cisco, uh, with mutual customers in ACI APIC. And we have a financial services customer, for example, that used APIC and ACI for automating the network at layer 2, layer 3. And Avi provided the missing, the last mile solution in form of the load balancers, the L4 to L7 sol solution. So this customer, a financial services customer, is using Avi in their private cloud environments for automating the application deployment with their own dashboards, with their own orchestration system that calls APIC APIs to provision the ACI fabric, calls Avi APIs to insert the uh, load balancing and application monitoring service. The A Avi and APIC in interact with each other through the REST APIs. In the end, what the customer has is a fully automated solution which then they can give to their end users for spinning up their own application, spinning up the load balancers, and also observing the telemetry, observing the health of the application, taking automated action based on how the uh, application is doing, and elastically, for example, scale out the infrastructure by adding additional load balancers, adding additional applications. So it's a fully automated network solution from L2 to L7. And we have other customers around technology, around service providers, um, around financial services companies using Avi and APIC for layer, through to, layer 2 to layer 7 automation. Very cool. How beneficial have you found DevNet in building the solution and enabling our mutual customers? So DevNet's been extremely helpful for us. Um, it's a single stop shop 
for our APIs across all uh, Cisco solutions. So here we discussed Cisco APIC and AVI integration, but with the same set of APIs or similar APIs, AVI can also integrate with other Cisco technologies, such as Cisco CSP, which is the a turnkey NFE appliance, a cloud services platform, where the customers get a turnkey software load balancers. Uh, we also integrate with Clicker, for application orchestration uh, through the APIs. And we plan to integrate with Cisco's Contiv, the container networking solution, as well as Tetration project. So again, the um, Cisco DevNet has been a fantastic resource for us for getting information about the APIs, for getting hands-on with it, and so on. Agreed. What would you recommend the audience, the listeners of this video, our mutual customers, and people attempting to learn the technology, integrate, develop systems augmenting the powerful, powerful set of capabilities it already has and take the most advantage out of it. How would they get, get started? How do they get involved? Sure. Yeah. So just the, the, the first recommendation is go to the DevNet's website and check out the APIs, download the software in your environment. And second, if you're at Cisco Live here, come and check uh, out some of the hands-on sessions. Getting your hands dirty is the best way to experience the power of Cisco APIs. As they say, learning and not doing is just the same as not learning. Thank you very much.